I think you've got to work out what makes you happy in life and what's most important to you. Is it really uh, trying to be perfect and worrying about what everyone else thinks of you? Especially on social media, if you put up a photo and people say, oh, you look great here. Does that really make you happy temporarily? Yeah, you feel good. Your ego is getting fed. But long term, I don't think it really does. And I think you need to get to a point where you do know what makes you happy and, and you're aware of that and you you don't rely on that to, to keep feeding feeding the happiness. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. We have the legendary Emily Sky in the house. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yeah, from down under in yep. Los Angeles. Uh, very excited. I guess we met where I, I forgot that we met for a few moments. It was like a brief moment at uh, Fit How Expo. Dare you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, at, a, at an expo years ago, but it's coming back to me the more I'm thinking about it now. So we met for a moment through Mark Fit, a mutual friend of ours who's a good buddy of mine. And uh, you've just been taking off, you know, since since then and since before then, you've been taking off in terms of your your career, your notoriety, you're getting on the cover of every magazine in the world. You've got a massive audience, I think, of over 12 million, probably 20 million by the time this comes out. Every week it's blowing up. Um, but it wasn't always this way where you had all these followers and people interested in you. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I was quite the opposite of, you know, the the popular sort of person. Mm-hmm. So growing up, I was quite uh, insecure, had no confidence at all. I was depressed, suffered anxiety. I was just lost. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I never fit in with anything. So when I was at school, I never sort of had a good group of friends. I couldn't, I always felt like I was the odd one out, almost like an alien. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I remember sitting down in the library and we're going through this this questionnaire thing to establish what what we suited for a job and nothing suited. I thought, I can't do this. I can't sit in an office. I can't do this. And I'm I'm different. I want to do something different that's creative, that is really, um, I guess, embracing and making the most of what I am and then how, how I can turn that into something that helps other people as well. So I, I didn't know how to do it. I knew it was there. I knew I was destined for something, but I was just, I knew it was going to take a process to get there, but also figure out who I am first mm-hmm. before I could do that. I feel very similar to that. <laughs> uh, did you feel like, were you good at school or did you struggle in school no, as well? No, um, I struggled and that's probably because I didn't go to school much. Really? Yeah, I hated school and I... I avoided it. I had Amen, like sister. 90 days off a year. Like 90 days oh, off? In, yeah. Wow. I just, I didn't go. I hated it. Was this in like elementary, middle or high school? The whole or? thing. I just, oh, really? I didn't, as I said before, I didn't fit in with the, with like a group of people that I felt like I, I belonged with, but also I didn't like restriction. I didn't like being told I had to do this and I had to study these subjects that I had, had no interest in. I, you know, I wasn't going to use it in the future. So it was a point. There Waste lit- of time. I literally don't remember very many things that I learned from school. Me either. A couple of classes in college that was like on sports marketing were something I was interested in. Yep. I was like, okay, I remember a few moments, but everything else, I felt the same way. I just yep. struggled and it's hard to remember and comprehend things and didn't want to study. Not interested. Yeah. yeah. It's yep. tough. Uh, so you didn't have friends, that many friends at school. You felt no. like you were an outsider. Why yep. is that? I thought Australia, everyone was nice. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm <laughs> nice, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know why exactly. Maybe I didn't conform. Maybe it's because I wasn't cool. I didn't. Mm. Um, I wasn't there much, so it's hard to, yeah. to bond with people when you're not actually there. And I was very shy as well. So as I said before, I didn't have much confidence. So I was so insecure and even just talking to someone. I mean, even to do this, if I thought I'd do this one day, it, I would lose it. Like I wouldn't be able to handle it. Mm. The thought of it would make me sick because I was just so, so shy. I couldn't talk to anyone. I couldn't stand up in front of the class. I'd fall over. It was just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where. I have an idea of where it came from. I think when my dad left when I was two and a half, it mm. sort of created this insecurity of not being good enough and that people always leave me and I'm not lovable and you know, all those negative things. Mm-hmm. So it's probably stemmed from that, but, you know, I've gotten over it and it's, yeah. I've used it for, for good, I guess. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> what were you doing when you weren't in school then? When if I wasn't. You, yeah, if you were taking these days off, what, were you just at home by yourself? Were you Yeah, like- at home. I'd watch TV. I'd do things that I enjoyed because I loved, I love everything that's creative. So taking photos, drawing, painting, writing, just all those sorts of things that I could, like I had the freedom to do 
what I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were doing this career job thing, like these questionnaires, and you were realizing that there was nothing you wanted or nothing you fit into, what was the vision you had for yourself? Did you see yourself doing what you're doing now and kind of health and wellness and fitness and inspiring people? Not, or? not this not this at all because I was always athletic. So I used to – that was the only thing I was good at at school really, mm-hmm. a- athletics, uh, like taking twins. photos. We're like twins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'd be good at that. I'd get picked for like the footy team at school and things like that. But footy uh, meaning soccer? Um, yeah, yeah, uh, football. So it's – I don't know, the ball's shaped like this, not round. It's different here, isn't it? You're talking it? rugby? Um, touch football. Touch football, okay. I don't know if you have the same thing here, so. Like American football. Maybe. Is it Sam? I don't know. Rugby. Rugby, rugby. yeah, yeah, rugby, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah so the, the boys would pick me for their team. That really? was the only time that huh. they were interested. Yeah. Was that because um, you were good or why did they pick you? Because I was good, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I was a fast runner, so. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so that's what you were doing in your off time. And you imagine yourself doing what when you were growing up then? I really had no idea what I was going to do. I thought maybe maybe I'd do something with sports. Maybe I'd go into athletics or sprinting or something. I was talking to um, the Australian Institute of Sport back in mm. – um, when I was, oh, I would have been probably twelve or something about joining a team that would train me ready for like possibly the Olympics down really? the track. But because I didn't have any self – belief I didn't think I'd be good enough for that either so I just I was ruining everything sabotaging myself before I even had a chance but I never saw anything like this we had no social media back then I didn't even have a computer until I was late teens Mm -hmm. and then phones came out when I was what 15 or 16 something like that so yeah there was no so no social media I wasn't really into um you know, inspiring people or anything like that. Nothing that I'm doing now because how do I inspire someone when I don't even like myself or the way I was living? Yeah, so I knew knew that I'd do something good and I wanted to do something that would help other people. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew that I would have some sort of following. I don't want to say fame, but like some sort of um, people looking to me Mm -hmm. for something, which I thought was ironic because I was so insecure and so shy. But you yeah. knew that's something you wanted. I knew it. I knew that it was, yeah. I or knew it was going to happen. Yeah. I, and it was weird because it, over here I've got this, like the ultimate of what I want to be and what I want to do. Didn't Wasn't sure that what it was at that stage. And I'm down here and I thought, how can I be that though? I'm supposed to be there, but I'm here now. And it just, it was a weird feeling. And then I knew that I had to start working on myself and I did reach a point where, where I did. It was probably early to mid twenties. So it was, I guess, fairly late. And I started working towards making myself the best I could be mm. by getting healthy and fit and being more positive and um, having some self-belief, surrounding myself with more positive people and and then realizing what actually made me happy in life, which was fitness, obviously, and health and helping people. So that's when I started doing what I'm doing now and, and sort of building that. Right. Yeah. Wow. So how did you get out of this kind of place of being insecure or – self-doubting yourself in your 20s what were the things you were doing were you reading books were you connecting with inspiring people like what what allowed you to see that trigger and actually move into it yeah well I it wasn't overnight it was like I guess it was a moment where I thought I'm not happy with myself I'm not happy with my life Mm -hmm. I don't see myself going anywhere I felt crap I just (laughs) didn't feel good at all and I I knew that I had to start making those changes that no one was going to come along and and pick me up and do it for me because that's sort of what I thought would happen. Someone would come and help me. Uh-huh. No one's coming to save no you. No one rescued you? No. Nah. I mean, in a way, yes, because I've got my boyfriend of eight years who I'm having a baby with. I know. Um, he came along and he had a lot to do with it, but I had to make take that first step and start making those changes. So it was removing the negative people who were bringing me down in my life because I was doing modeling before. So. Mm-hmm. It sounds very odd because I was so insecure, had no self-belief and yet I was doing modeling because I, I saw that as a, as a way of maybe getting um, some sort of love or um, praise from other people so I could feel like I fit in. So I was doing that um, and that obviously wasn't working because it just made me more and more unhappy. More insecure, more unhappy, <laughs> yeah. comparing yourself yep, to every yep. other model. It's very competitive and very unhealthy for wow. me. Right. I'm not saying for everyone. I mean, some people love it, but for me, yeah. it just wasn't good. And when you were modeling, were you working out every day? No. Or was it more like starving yourself and trying no, to it fit was, in? I, I didn't know I was starving myself, but now I look back and I know I definitely wasn't eating enough and mm. I was doing like long cardio sessions, Yeah. just trying to get as skinny as I could, could mm. be. Mm. Yeah. And then I realized that wasn't healthy. So. Right. 
So Fairly. how long were you modeling for? About 10, 10 or 12 years. 12 but years. towards the end of that, that's when I transitioned into fitness. So I started getting healthier and fitter. I started building muscle. I wanted to have muscle and be strong. And I was really passionate about that. So Why did you want muscle? Because I, I guess I, I saw women that had muscle. And back then, it wasn't like it is now on Instagram. Every second person's a fitness model. Yeah. Or so they say. Um, it was... Very, um, there's only a few people. There's only like some people doing fitness competitions, and the women were quite muscular, but they weren't really someone that the everyday person could look to and, and mm-hmm. think, I want to be like that. It was almost too, almost too much, too, but I liked yeah, yeah. it. I appreciate yeah. it. I yeah. love, I love muscle on a woman. I think it's empowering. So I saw the empowering side of it. I, I saw magazines with these fit women on it with muscle, and I thought, oh, I want to be like that. And whether they're happy or not, that's another thing. It doesn't matter. It did the job for me. Mm-hmm. So I used that to motivate me and, and help me make changes. So I went out and started lifting lifting weights, really? learned as much as I could about it. And um, then I started doing fitness modeling. So I was doing like ad, so um, doing regular modeling and, and going into fitness modeling. Yeah, and it was it? hard because I was skinny before and doing – like the normal sort of modeling, mm-hmm. traditional Fashion. modeling. Yeah. yeah. And then I started gaining muscle and they were saying to me, um, like my my agency that I was with or different companies that I was working with, that I was too muscly now and it was mm-hmm. too much. Even though I wasn't, I was a lot smaller than I am now. <laughs> right. Like I, I was still tiny, but it was too much and they didn't like it. So they started Photoshopping my photos. No I was way. getting my abs out, bringing in like the shoulders that I'd built. So I thought, this is really shit. <laughs> I just, I didn't like that, that they were changing me. Finally, I was happy with myself and I felt amazing. And yet they were trying to change me and bring me back to what I was before. So then I thought, I'm going to have to say goodbye to this. I can't, I can't do modeling because I can't be, not that it was making me happy anyway, but I don't want to be that. That's not who I am anymore. And I loved fitness and I wanted to make fitness cool and that everyone wanted I wanted everyone to have what I had in their own way. Mm-hmm. And that's when I went out and told all my friends and family, you need to start exercising, and eating healthier food. It's amazing. I felt incredible. And then I thought, how can I do this on a bigger scale? And that's when I, um, Instagram, Facebook and yeah. all the different social media platforms came when, out. When was this that you started kind of putting this information out online? Uh, well, I started on a, it was called Blogspot. Yeah. <laughs> so I was blogging so what I was doing. doing. A blog. yeah. yeah. When was that? <sighs> oh, probably about... Seven and a half years ago, eight years ago, two thousand ten, two thousand nine. About that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was around the time I met my partner, um, Declan. So that's when I started getting really, really fit and healthy, and then started blogging it and realized that's what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah, we just kind of documenting your process, yeah. and your transformation. And so what I was you were putting, learning. I was doing competitions back then. Mm-hmm. So you know, up on stage flexing, <laughs> all yeah. the rest of it. Um, <laughs> That's a whole another story as well. I find it too intense for me. But um, I still enjoyed it. I learned a lot from it. So I was documenting the competition, how I went about it, the diet and training that I was doing and then how I came out of it because I actually, after the first competition I did, because I was so restrictive, I put on a lot of weight within mm. like a week and a half after. Wow. So I realized how unhealthy it was. So I documented that as well. And then, um, then Facebook and Instagram. I think I was on Facebook first. Instagram, I was a little bit late getting on, but I started using those platforms as well to build it up and really went hard trying to build the audience and, mm-hmm. and to reach as many people as I could yeah. to spread a positive message and sure. spread information. When did you realize that it started to kind of take off? Like the things you were doing, that people were clinging on to it and they were excited about it and yeah, getting, it was, getting results in their life? It was years ago. So before I started my actual program that I've got, it's a diet and training program, I noticed that people really liked the fitness content that I was putting up and which went into more content around mind mind health, mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, they like so, that the most. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually more into all the mind, yeah, mind side of things. Than, yeah, so it all starts with, with your mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it became quite popular and um, it, it really started taking off online and I think a lot of other people sort of jumped on and were doing the whole fitness thing and it went crazy but I I feel like I got in at a good time because it was before it was like popular and it was cool to do Mm -hmm. and um, people loved what I was doing and the content I was putting out there so it grew from there and I realized that they they really did like the the workout videos that I was doing I was putting one up every day 
of a free workout and no one else – I'd never seen anyone do it before, a video with instructions on it. Really? Yeah. On so Facebook I was doing or both? Facebook and Instagram yeah. and it was like short. I had to speed it up because it was like 15 seconds yeah, you yeah. had on, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so people started like um, tagging people in on Instagram and then sharing mm. it on Facebook and it took off. I, I think in a week I built a million followers on, on Facebook just from week? videos going viral. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you wish it was still that easy to grow that <laughs> yes, fast? Right? I think about it all the time. <laughs> if I only time. would have done more of that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Make the most of it. That's it's crazy. Going well. Tell me about, I mean, gosh, Instagram has taken over our lives, hasn't it? Isn't In it a way, crazy? yeah. It's crazy, right? Um, talk to me about, you think this, the people that have a more struggle now with body dysmorphia because of Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, or... You know, is it easier now because there's more tools that are available for us to overcome as opposed to maybe when you were 13 mm. and there wasn't as much access to this information? There's definitely a bit of both. I think there were always issues. It's just we weren't aware of the issues. And now people, are, they have a, a voice. They're, they're able mm. to be heard now. So I think on one hand, we've got Instagram with everyone on there who's like living the perfect life, putting their perfect photos on there, betraying that and giving people the idea of they can have that too. And then people never feeling good enough. So like in particular, young girls looking at this content thinking that's life goals. I want to be like that. I want a body like that or a family like that or clothes like that, whatever it is. Relationship like that, yeah. Yeah, relationship goals. That's another one (laughs) I've talked about before. But they compare themselves and they always feel like they're not good enough. And, And I struggled with not being good enough for many years. But I didn't have Instagram and, and Facebook back then. But it was... In, in magazines and on movies and people at school that you compare yourself to. So I guess it's it's similar, but obviously there's so much more now on Instagram. But I just hope that people realise they can reach out and talk to people. And if people do just, um, I guess, talk more, talk to each other, then yeah. they can realise they can help people. But um, I think that if we, if we use Instagram for – for good, like what I'm trying to do by educating people and being real with people that you, you've got like, it's sort of balanced. Mm. So you've got the unhealthy people out there and then people like me, hopefully that come along and, and can help people um, who maybe they didn't have that before. If, they, if there was no Instagram, they wouldn't have been able to have that chance. Yeah. What do you think we can do with Instagram and Facebook to regain a healthy sense of our bodies again? You know, <laughs> without having to compare or do these things. What can we do since we're scrolling all day and looking yeah. at this? You've got to be responsible for what you're, you're consuming, I think. Mm. And it, which it's, it's hard to do because young kids aren't, they, they're not, they like looking at this sort of stuff. They love seeing the, the perfect. They love that idea. It's almost like a romantic movie. It's mm. romanticizing it. So um, I think if, if people can take more responsibility and, and if something's making them feel bad, if a particular person's making them feel bad about themselves and maybe question themselves, why Why are they and do mm. I need to have them on there? Can I get rid of them? Yeah. But that's hard. I mean, you can only say to people, be responsible, don't <laughs> yeah, do this, yeah. but they're still going to do it because it's an ad- addiction, isn't it? Mm-hmm. People love it. Yeah. What about yourself in terms of, you know, you've got this massive audience, you have all these people that look up to you that are inspired by your mindset, your body, your look, your muscles, whatever it is. Do you ever go through times of still being insecure or comparing yourself, yep. even though you have this, you know? Yeah, it, it never everyone just... Everyone wants to be you, but you're like, well, I'm still not good enough. I don't think or, anyone feels 100% confident all the time in themselves. I think mm-hmm. people always have times where they, you know, have a bad day or they don't feel like they're as good as they can be. And I have those times. It's nowhere near what it used to be. But I think now I have the tools to be able to get through it mm-hmm. and I know how to and... I'm aware of, of when I'm feeling down. Why am I feeling this way? What's what's contributing to that? What can I remove to help myself move on and, and get past this? So being really, mm. I guess, self-aware. Why do you think you get insecure at times? What are the reasons? Um, I don't know whether it's because I used to be a very insecure person so that it's always it's sort habit. of – I'm always fighting yeah. it. It's yeah. always sort of com- coming back. So um, I think that that's a huge thing and getting on top of that and, and knowing that that's – the type of person that I used to be as well so not not going back to that uh but there is there's a lot like social media is insane it's competitive there's a lot of um, people out there posting things that could I could look at and then go oh I'm not this or I'm not that or for instance I'm 
pregnant at the moment, obviously, and I have gained fat oh, are you? and cellulite. Yeah, oh, that's know. what this lump is here. <laughs> <laughs> but I've gained fat and cellulite and, and changed and I've lost a lot of Stretch muscle. Stretch marks or whatever, yeah. Yeah, all these things are happening, which I am 100% embracing. I'm happy with. But I could look at these other people who are online who are, who are fit and pregnant and they look amazing and they're on their own journey. That's a thing. Everyone's mm-hmm. on their own journey and shouldn't compare. But I could look at them and think, well, how come this person's got abs and she's a few months ahead of me and mm. – and yet her abs are there and she's tiny and I've got all this cellular and stuff going on. <laughs> I could look at that and, and that could affect me, but I, I don't. I think I'm at a really good place now where I'm mm. I'm so happy and my baby's obviously most important to me. So I don't let those those insignificant things affect me. Yeah. That's yeah. good. What are some of the tools that you use when you're looking to overcome that, you <laughs> yeah. know, insecurity or fear or yep. comparison? Because I think this will be helpful for a lot of people who are constantly comparing. Yeah. To see someone like you with a massive audience, you know, great body, great image, great everything on how you do that. I think you've got to work out what makes you happy in life and what's most important to you. Is it really uh, trying to be perfect and worrying about what everyone else thinks of you, especially on social media? If you put up a photo and people say, oh, you look great here, does that really make you happy temporarily? Mm. Yeah, you feel good. Your ego is getting fed, but... Long term, I don't think it really does. And I think you need to get to a point where you do know what makes you happy and, and you're aware of that and you you don't rely on that to, to keep feeding feeding the happiness. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but when I feel down, and I've talked about this before with my followers, but when I get in my sort of down moments, and I haven't had one for a while, which is a good thing. Great. But um, last year I had a bit of a time. I think I'd been traveling a lot and I just got really run down and everything mm. just went to shit pretty much. Yeah. Um, it's hard to I, keep your body healthy. Yeah. And, and then your mind goes and ugh. But I, I was feeling crappy. I wasn't training, which is a big thing. Getting moving is incredible. It does incredible things for you and the, mm. the endorphins that you get from it. Are really, it's a real thing. It is a real thing. <laughs> yeah, and I, I hadn't been doing it for a while, and I just, I didn't want to. I wasn't motivated, and I thought, how can to I move, get myself? To work out. Yeah, yeah, how can I get myself back there? I know that that's what changed my life, and yet here I am stuck feeling shitty again. And then I, I thought, okay, well, I don't want to go to the gym because I'm not motivated to do that. How can I get myself there? So I put music on mm. and dance around the house, and I started learning hip hop. I was putting tutorials on the big screen on YouTube and um, dancing around the lounge room like an idiot. I was no good at it, but it's not the point. That's right. I felt good. I felt happy and the music lift, lift my mood and mm. I started getting outdoors outside in the in the sun and fresh air and just finding that, that balance again and, and I guess grounding myself in a way so I could start to feel like, oh, okay, what is it? What is it that makes me happy again? What is it that gives me life that mm. makes me jump out of bed every day so I got back there and then I, I'm back on track again so you got to right. find what what it is that does it for you maybe it's reading a book maybe it's walking I don't know ice skating rock climbing whatever yeah do something that makes you feel good again but you got to find your creative mm-hmm. and my creative for me is training and getting outdoors and talking to people and helping yeah. people yeah it's probably not sticking on your phone looking on Instagram all day no, that's probably not that's, gonna do it. that can be quite poisonous. I know. <laughs> yeah, Gosh. and you've got to set boundaries for yourself and yeah. restrictions. How do you, um, when you're when you're following and your accounts is your business and your brand, and if something isn't working or isn't getting the results you want, how do you deal with that inner voice? When like, yep. okay, I put a post out here. Normally, I get a certain amount of real yeah. results, whether traction, comments, whatever, sales, and I didn't get that. Yeah. How do you handle that inner critic? It's hard because it is me. I mean, I'm I'm the brand. It's yeah. not someone else. It's so it's hard not to take it personally. And I think you invest so much. I invest a lot into my business and what I do, and I love it. But I do take things personally because it is me, and it, and I know it's it is a hard thing to to do. So I've got to sort of sit back and go, okay, well, what? There's a lot of things coming into play here with algorithms and things. What yes, what could so be the reason? Is it really my content that people mm-hmm. aren't liking or is it because they're not actually seeing it because Instagram's done an update and mm-hmm. people who, you know, who follow me aren't actually seeing the post? Yeah. So you've got to like step back and, and realize what's going on here. So it is hard. It's hard to sort of monitor what's working and what's not and whether it is you or not. Um, but yeah, going – you can test and, and, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to work out what actually works and what – people want to see and what you're following Mm -hmm. um, really likes. But yeah, you've really got to think about maybe it is just the algorithm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And how do you stay grounded when you're taking off 
something something's taking off and doing really well. You're on the cover of every magazine. You're getting brand deals. You're getting all this stuff. It is all working for you. How do you stay grounded and also stay uh, happy with it being enough? Yeah. Sometimes we'll get these big marks and then we're like, oh, but it could be more. It could be this and it's not enough. So how do you stay grounded in those times? Yeah, I think because it's taken a long time to get to where I am and Mm -hmm. you could say that I started working on it when I was a teenager because that's when I started uh, with modeling and I use a lot of a lot of the things I learned with modeling now. So I do a lot of things myself. I take my own photos on a tripod with a timer. Mm. I edit my own videos. I write my own content. I reply to people online. I do a lot of stuff myself, which I learned when I was doing modeling. So I think in life, there's a lot of things that you can use right now. Um, I mean, down the track when you find what it is you want to do. But because I've gone through that and I've worked really hard, it hasn't just happened overnight. I wasn't just handed it. I have a lot of appreciation for for what I've got. One thing I do struggle with is really, really appreciating what what it is and being grateful for what it is that I've got right now and, and, and it being enough because I always want to be – I want to be the best. I want to reach more people, do, do so much stuff and I sometimes get frustrated because I know that I'm not quite where I want to be yet and it's a really hard balance to, to really appreciate and, and look back on what you've done and go, yeah, I've killed this, I'm doing well. And still go, oh, there's still more I want to do. It's mm-hmm. it's quite hard. And that's something I do struggle with a lot. And when I do, say, get a magazine cover, I've got to really make an effort to go, I achieved this because I deserve it. It's it's difficult. And I think I get a bit mixed up with I don't want to sort of lose who I am mm-hmm. through the whole thing. And I don't want people to think, and it's funny because I always say, don't worry about what people think, but I, <laughs> I do. I, I care what people think because I'm trying. I'm doing this for a reason. I want to help people. So I have to care what they think. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't be doing this. But I don't want them to ever um, – I want to always stay, I guess, relatable to people and never seem like I'm full of myself, mm-hmm. which I'm not. Uh, and it, and I'm far from it actually. Yeah. So, yeah, it's finding that balance between being proud of yourself, looking at what you've achieved, where you've come from, and then still being able to say, yeah, but I've still got – room to grow and more to do and more mm-hmm. goals to do yeah who's been the most influential person in your life growing up growing up <sighs> when I was younger I didn't really have anyone that I sort of looked up to um as as I've I don't know if I'm still growing up now <laughs> in my 30s sure yes <laughs> there's a few people um One's Brené Brown, who's mm-hmm. who's um she's a researcher, shame researcher, and mm-hmm. we just interviewed her a couple weeks ago. Oh, she's in incredible! Houston, she's so amazing. Yeah, so she's been a, a big part of getting me through like tough times. Oh, that's too. great! Yeah, that's incredible great. woman. So I look to her, and also um Dwayne Johnson, who mm-hmm. I met last year, I think it was. He's been a bit of a mentor that's great. for me. Um, yeah. Because obviously, like he's absolutely killing it at everything. Yeah, yeah, and he's very been grounded you in your career or helping with stuff. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So if I've ever got you know something I'm I'm struggling with or I don't know how to deal with something, he's a great person to ask mm. his opinion on. That's great. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> what about your your parents? You said your dad left when you were young, right? Yeah, still two and a half. Do you have a relationship with him, or is he completely what? out of the picture? Is <laughs> how he... long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't have a relationship with him. I met him a few years ago for the first time really? since I was, I think six was the last time I saw him. Oh, wow. He was sort of in and out of my sister and, and my life um, for, for years. And then it was unhealthy for us, for him to come in yeah. like six every six months, see yeah. us. And then I just struggled with that. So um, he decided not to have anything to do with us. He went and did whatever he did with his life. Not much. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> I, st- I kept in contact with my my grandparents, which is his parents. Uh-huh. And then he, they always said, when are you going to meet your father? Are you going to meet your father? And I never, to be honest, wanted to because I I was hurt by him leaving and it really was hard for me to get over, which I did get over. Why bring that up? You know, he's had no interest in me all these mm-hmm. years. So, But I met him because I yeah, felt like I had to. Yeah. My sister and I went and met him a few years ago and then... Does he live in Australia or was he's he... He's in New Zealand now, so... Oh. Yeah, so that's sort of he had he had opportunities to keep the, the relationship going or build a relationship, and he didn't he didn't do it. So, mm. what do you do? Hey, I don't yeah. think he deserves it to be honest. Yeah, did you guys go to New Zealand and see him? Yeah, or? um, yes, I've we've I've seen him. I think I went on my own this trip, but we met him in Australia in Sydney, and then I went over to see my grandparents over there and saw him there as well. Right, years ago. Yeah, what opened up for you during that time? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no. Nope. I remember 
I met him and I thought, oh, yeah, he's a nice guy. And we have a few things in common and I can see I get these traits from him, but mm. it's I don't see him as a father at all. Yeah. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson you learned from him? him? Even being absent the whole time. What's what the... not to be. <laughs> What's because that? there's some things, I see some things that he is or was and he's a mu- musician. So he didn't actually want a family anymore. So he had married my mum, had me and my sister and then realized that's not what he wants he actually came home when my sister was born my mum brought her home and he said I'm I'm leaving it's not Mm. what I want and she said I've just had your your child your second child what are you doing and he said no I want to be a musician and want to travel and be a famous whatever so um he made that choice and uh he didn't succeed at it and um yeah that was the question again (laughs) biggest lesson you learned biggest lesson not to be like that. So um, family comes first and it's mm. most important. I'm about to have my first baby and I almost gave away the sex then. But my baby will be number one <laughs> priority. Oh. Don't you try and get it out oh. of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, that everything else is secondary to that. It's great to have goals and um, you know career goals or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's people in your life that are most important and you've really got to invest the most time and energy into that, mm-hmm. I think. How was uh, developing, you know, a relationship with your partner? You're not married, correct? Is it? No, we we need to get him to put a ring on it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you you want a ring on it, but he's not ready. No, yet. he does. It's just we haven't had time. <laughs> I know it's an excuse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's all good. I'm having his baby now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's time uh, for a ring. How is how is having a family? Um, Supporting your dream and vision or not supporting it? Do you feel like it's going to help your vision or do you feel like it's shifting vision to have a family now? Something I've learned over the years is you've got to adapt to things. And if you can't adapt well, then that's when I think you fail or you suffer. And it's hard for humans to adapt. I think we get comfortable. But um, I will adapt to this. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that having a baby will make me probably more relatable to Connect people. Connect a lot of moms and yeah. There's a new market there because I do have a big following of mums already. Mm-hmm. So then they're like, yes, finally, you, know, you, <laughs> you like me, me sort of thing. <laughs> so I think it, um, it'll yeah. be good, yeah, to show. And also to show how I become a mum and go through that and also getting back in shape. My priority won't be to get back in shape. It's going to be my baby. Mm-hmm. But of course, I love health and fitness and I want to be healthy yeah. and fit for my child and for me and my family. So I will get back there, but it's not like you're not I'm trying not to get on a cover pressure. of a magazine no. right away, and yeah, well, I've have got a six pack. I might have something. <laughs> <laughs> you're not trying but, to get a six pack no, right away. No, but. that's it. It's not about that. It's about how I feel and being the best for my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, what about biggest lesson from your mom? What are the biggest thing she taught you? Um, she taught a lot of values and how to treat people. There's a few things. I mean, I don't want to talk about ne- too much negative stuff because I love my mom to bits. But she's taught me some things about she she's a bit of a doormat and I think she'd be doormat. comfortable with me saying that. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, she's a doormat. She's a people pleaser, always wants to make sure everyone else is happy and, and first before her. Before her never worries about herself. And mm. and I used to be a lot like that. But I I work not to be and not to say that I don't care about other people and I don't put other people first, but I don't think you can really truly help other people unless you help yourself first. And not if you've got to be a doormat and and you're unhappy and you're suffering. I really yeah. don't think that benefits anyone. So that's probably one of the biggest lessons. But she she treats everyone very well, and that's something I've learned as well. So mm-hmm. that's positive. She's she's an amazing woman raising my sister and mm. and me all that's those cool. years on her own. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So what is the dream for you then? After the baby comes, what's the? <laughs> I'm living you, my dream. <laughs> you've you've built this massive brand and business. You've helped you know tens of thousands of people through your programs, your products. You know. It's hard to say what my... Do you have a clear my, vision or dream? I've had clear visions along the way and there's things I've sort of envisioned and it's manifested into something and it's actually come true and it's crazy. I look back and go, but I, I actually envisioned this and now I've got it. I think I've heard you talk about mm-hmm. this before, but um, it it's real and I've done that over the years and I, I'm very happy with what I have achieved. I always talk about I sometimes can't really understand and appreciate and believe that I deserve it, but I have achieved a lot. And 
there's so much more I do want to achieve, but it really goes back to how can I reach more people? How can I how can I have a positive impact on them? So it's just growing my business, growing mm-hmm. the fit family that I've built to be bigger. Why do you want to reach so many people? Because I was never happy before before I found what makes me happy with which is health and fitness and doing it's it's weird what came first um i love helping people and love seeing how much they can change going yeah. from being unhappy to finding what makes them happy and it's different for everyone obviously but for instance to give you an example i had a girl at I think I was at the fitness expo that I met you at mm-hmm. that we can't remember. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You're not um, right. You thought it was Ohio. It's LA. We met yeah. thousands of people. So. <laughs> yeah. um, but a girl came up. It was actually her boyfriend came up to me and she said, my girlfriend's here and she wants to meet you, but she's so nervous and shy and she's she's suffering. She's got depression really bad and she's, mm. um, you know, not wanting to live anymore. Wow. And I just thought, oh, this is like outside of what I do, but I, I can't turn her away. Like she's – I need to I need to meet her and sit with yeah. her. So – I found her just sitting on the ground. She was crying and um, just so, just freaking out because she wanted to meet me, but she was scared to. So I sat down with her and I told her some of my story and what I've been through with hating myself and my life and um, not knowing what to do with it and blah, blah, blah. So um, she sort of opened up and she was then in happy tears and um, thanked me for it. And she ended up messaging me after saying that I made a huge impact on her and she was able oh. to make changes. And that just that's like one of the main reasons why I do this because it it's not all the yeah it's great to have followers and you know all that sort of stuff that might be attached to ego but this is really what matters reaching people in some way and I think if we're vulnerable and authentic then it makes it easier to be able to reach them because they realize hey I'm not alone or here's this person over here who's going through what I am going through or who has has gone through it Mm -hmm. because a lot of people might look at someone like me and think oh you know she has everything and it's a perfect life or whatever even though I put out a lot of content to to dispel that but Mm -hmm. um, it's good to sort of show that hey I've achieved all this and I am happy and I've achieved so much within myself my career has been a great achievement but what I've achieved personally is far uh, far outweighs that so I love that young girls like that can actually see me and then go, oh, there's hope for me. I yeah. Can, I can do this. Did you ever have a dark place where you felt like you didn't want to be be here anymore? Yeah. Really? Yeah, when, when I was, was a teenager. That? Really? Yeah, I was I was probably about maybe 18 and I had a not a not a nice boyfriend. I had a few pretty terrible relationships and um, one of those I did get an AVO out on. It's a um, restraining order on a guy who was very abusive and mm. tried to stab me with a knife and no way. smash plates over my head and tried to throw me off a balcony. But he's not the guy that I actually... Um, Holy cow. I had one before him. Smash a plate a over your head? Yeah. He used to get them out of the cup and smash them at me. Oh, my gosh. Horrible. Did you yeah. live with him or was that just... You were living at home still or how was yeah, that? Yeah, so back in my dark... Cause I've sort of changed topic here, but um, in my darkest spot was when I was about 18. I was with this boyfriend that was no good <laughs> not, not nice I'll keep it at that and um, I didn't want to live anymore so I actually got tablets and I took a heap of mm. tablets trying to end it and then I something happened and I, I said no this isn't what I want I remember feeling like I was sinking through the bed and it was all over and I no I want to live I want to live and I made that choice and it took years to sort of come you know work out what what actually can make me happy and everything else but um, I did make the choice to Oh, I choose life. Anyway, so years later, I, I meet this other guy, <laughs> horrible boyfriend. That was boyfriend. when you were with another boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, were yeah. You living I, with had a, him? I had a good run. Were you um, living with him or were you still at home? Not or? not the one when I was 18. I was still at home. And before um, you go on to the next yeah. horrible boyfriend, <laughs> did what what happened? I mean, you took these pills. Did you like go to the hospital and pump them out? Did you throw up? No, or it just, did I threw work? up. You threw up. Yeah, I okay, threw up, it. yeah. It was, I was, I You're like, really, I want to live. It was very blurry. I sort got of crawled it. out. And, yeah, and okay. I think I went to the laundry so I didn't wake my mum up. Wow. Vomited and yeah, it's it's pretty crazy to think that I was that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, yeah. The, the next horrible relationship. Yeah, then I was living with him and he was the one that was very physically abusive. Smashing and, um, plates on your head. And yeah, strangling. He'd lay on top of me and strangle me. No way. Yeah, my neck. And I remember looking into his eyes and they were just evil eyes. Just, oh. Horrible. So, um, and he tried I, to stab you with a knife. Yep, he chased me around. I got out. I was living in an apartment, and um, I got out the front door and ran down the corridor. And he chased me, 
trying to stab me with the knife. And I, was, I got to this lift because it was a main lift and there was another one around the corner. It was like a slow lift. A left lift? A or lift, a lift, like an elevator. Okay. Yes, I knew I wouldn't be able to get to the first one in time because he'd get me. So I sprinted around to the other one, got there, opened the doors, doors open. I can hear him coming. <laughs> it was like a movie. So the door like, shut like right when he was coming in there? Yeah, boom, hand goes through, stops it. His hand stopped it? Yep. And then what? Pulls, dragged me out. And <sighs> put, like by my, I think it was my hair, my neck oh my or something. Gosh. I don't know. And he's pulling me along. And then the security saw it on the on the ta- on the um, Camera. footage. Yeah. And they yelled out something. I don't remember much. It's all sort of blurry. But um, they stopped him. And then I, because I thought it's all over. Like, you were I'm screaming, gone. I'm assuming. Yeah. I think I was. Oh my gosh. Um, so I, I ended up, I had to plan my escape because I, I had moved away. I was actually in Queensland at that stage and I had family in Sydney. So it's actually a plane trip. It's like an hour hour on the plane. So, I so didn't the, cop, have the, to go with. the security came and broke it up or something. Yeah, and you police were able to came. Get, you were able to get away. He did the whole, um, I can only, like, oh, I want to change and I can only do it if you, you're here with me to support me and I, I love you and I'll change for you and do all the crying and the. It's like the beaten housewife syndrome where you just keep going back. Wow. And because I wanted him, you know, to, to get better and help him, I kept going back. And So this is this point where you said enough is enough and you didn't go back? I knew that? that I couldn't go back, but I was stuck up there. So I had to plan how I was so going to stay. stayed for a while. So I said to him, because what he would do is he'd say, um, he'd manipulate me and, and say, if you leave, I'll... I'll hurt your family. Oh, my gosh. Like, I'll kill your family sort oh of thing. Oh, my like, gosh. He's a, he was a nutter. Wow. Absolute nutter. So, I planned – I said that I wanted to move back so I could be close to where my family was. So, we moved back and then waited till he went out one night because he'd go out and cheat on me all the time. <laughs> yeah, horrible. Um, got a friend to help me with all my stuff and I took as much as I could and escaped and then he turned up at my mum's house, tried to drive his car through the garage. He's like crazy. But he was yelling at, I'm going to drive the car through the garage. And he's revving it and trying to like drive it through to break in so he could get to me. And he's pacing around the house and oh knocking gosh. on the, like banging on the windows and doors. We have very similar experiences with exes. Really? <laughs> yes. Did you have a nut or two? I had a, a few interesting ones, a yes. Few, yeah. Where they were at my house with a knife threatening to do things, yes. I wonder what it is that attracts these people. Uh, we're just crazy, I guess. I don't know. I think you learn from it though, don't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. I learn a lot from those experiences and yeah. I've been able to help other people with similar yeah. things. So you got out. Yeah. You left. Yeah. Moved. Yeah, it took a year to get the rest of my stuff back. He had my passport. Oh, man. He wouldn't give it back. But it was a you know small sacrifice to make. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Was the next guy... Just as bad, or did you start finally? <laughs> no, the next guy was quite good actually. I um, we're still friends today. Um, had a great relationship, just wasn't like f- in love sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, sure. And then I met Declan when I was twenty four, so I'm I'm thirty two now. I had to think about that. <laughs> um, yeah, met him, and he's my best friend. He's mm. my business partner. He's he's everything. He's he's amazing. He helped me through a lot of the stuff and showed me what a you know, how a man should really treat someone or a partner should treat their, mm-hmm. their love. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Amazing story. Good people do exist out there. You just got to go through the bad ones they sometimes. They do, right? They do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I want to transition into... That got uh, intense, didn't it? <laughs> that was amazing, yeah. Uh, I want to transition into a healthy body image in men. So mm-hmm. We talked about this with women, but uh, I feel like there's a lot of challenges with men as well with the distraction comparison. You know, I see shredded ripped strong dudes on instagram all the time not saying that i'm comparing and like not happy with my body but i know there's a lot of this happening how can men um i guess have a more healthy relationship with their body image Mm. for themselves and how can they support other men in the process as well i think it's hard because women are a little bit more vocal about it i think perhaps or they Mm. they tend to more um gravitate towards each other and create these um groups of communities. Like communities yeah communities. there's no support groups of men i think being men like, feel like it's um it's not like a masculine thing it's to they, they isolate themselves and they don't know that they can reach out because that makes them look like they're weak and they have this fear I, i'm just not talking from experience because i'm not a man obviously but i think they have a fear of not being like demasculinated mm-hmm. or um a weakness so and it's not it's the opposite i think if you reach out and you're actually 
you talking about these issues that you have and talking to each other, then I think that's a, a sign of strength mm. and it's it's a good thing. But I, I really do think talk about it more and talk to your mate, like find someone who's who is a good, a, a genuine friend and and talk to them. Mm. My um my boyfriend actually does this a lot with people. He's got a lot of friends that sort of ask him for help and he, he's become almost a bit like a counsellor mm. because he loves loves being able to help people like that. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of men don't. They just have to keep it all to themselves and think they've got to stay strong. Yeah. 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 Talking more, I think, helps with everything. Oh, got to talk Talking more. in general. People need people. Yeah. We've got to talk to each other more. So true. What's the thing that you're most proud of that you've done that maybe people do know or don't mm-hmm. know about you? I think the most proud is, as I was saying before, like my personal what I've my personal journey and how I've come to a place where I do actually accept myself and I'm not chasing this idea of trying to fit in with people it's more about having a sense of belonging and mm. um, only having a few select people around me that love me and realizing what's real and what's not or who's real and who's not um, but definitely yeah having a being able to say I love myself that's a huge thing for me because I hate I despise myself before but I actually love myself now and I I make mm. I, I invest a lot into myself because I think I'm worth it now and I think that's uh, something that everyone needs to find and hopefully everyone does find but mm. that's definitely my biggest achievement it, it outweighs anything else career mm. career wise or anything yeah, yeah that's great I think it's a great achievement yeah. yeah if we're not happy with ourselves what the, the rest of stuff doesn't matter yeah yeah What's a question you wish more people would ask you that they don't ask? <laughs> you've you've actually asked a few. Um, <sighs> I think more towards mental health is probably something I mm-hmm. I do am more interested in. Yeah. And it's what's something you do then to empower your mental health or to strengthen your mental health on a daily basis, either in the morning or afternoon or whenever. Breathing. <laughs> sounds simple but just stopping to take time to breathe through into your diaphragm so that you can think and and have a clear sort of mind and and you know what what so you can work out where you're at and where you want to go from there and you you get so caught up in life being so busy that you sort of forget what's happening well I do anyway I get really out of control and don't know I just feel stressed out (laughs) it's just so much yeah. to to sort of handle and you've got to stop sometimes take deep breaths and then you know relax spend time on yourself and even if it's only 10 10 minutes a day and I know a lot of people talk about this but um doing something that is like your creative or your, your time out that is just time to yourself sit down reading a book or sit down doing nothing turn your phone off and just really try to what's the word like get get back to like your balance they get grounded I guess. yeah yeah grounded so for me even just walking along the beach i'm lucky enough to live near the beach and mm-hmm. getting my shoes off and just putting my bare feet in the sand or in, getting in the water i just i feel like you're almost earthing yourself like you're down downloading all the crap and the negative stuff and then you're recharging yourself with positive sure um, energy from the earth sure not to get too hippie or anything but yeah, yeah. um yeah it works <laughs> we're I mean, in la it's okay you can speak like that here <laughs> yeah um very cool anything else on mental health besides breathing mental health yeah talking more like i've, I've yeah. talked about before but talking more to people and um not being afraid of opening up and, mm. and being vulnerable with the right people of sure. course yeah sometimes if you're vulnerable with the wrong people it can really turn worse yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for you um mental health yeah, it's a it's a whole whole other topic, isn't it? But um, I think yeah, definitely just realize realizing that you're not alone and that there's there's so many people out there that are more more alike than you think. Mm-hmm. And if we did just talk about it more, then we could get through it more and have that support. Yeah, support each other. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, final few questions for you, or is there any questions you have for me first before we bring you to the final? When are you few coming questions? to Australia? I've been asked this a lot lately. I have a, I have a big audience there, actually, so I need to get over there sometime. Um, maybe around my next book. Yeah. This, this book launch, I might try to come at the end of this year, so we'll figure it out. But yeah, you're on the Gold cool. Coast, right? Yeah, it's beautiful how, there. How far is that? Is there anything? What city? 
Uh, Brisbane's the main city. Is that where you near are? There. I'm on the oh. Gold Coast, but Brisbane's about an hour hour and 20 minutes drive okay. from there. So you can actually fly into Brisbane. Okay. I'm trying to get you over there. So if I go to Brisbane, you'll come? We'll yes, hang out in Brisbane? Of course. Okay. 100%. All right, cool. Yeah, maybe I'll do a tour. I'll connect with you guys after sometime. Um, this is called The Three Truths. Mm-hmm. So you've put out a lot of content over the years. You've got a lot of programs, you know, videos, images, everything. Um, but let's say this is your last day many years from now and all the stuff you've ever put out has been erased. All your content, images, everything's gone. Programs, gone. Um, but you have a piece of paper and a pen to write down the three things you know to be true about all of your experiences in life, the three lessons that you would share with the world, and these would be the only things that people would have to remember you by. What would you say are your three truths? Be 100% you and don't be afraid to be who you are and it's not about trying to be who you think people want you to be you've got to find out what like who who you are and then being happy with with that and realizing that not everyone's going to like you but it's it's so much better to just be 100 percent you and if people don't like you then that doesn't matter Mm -hmm. there's one Mm -hmm. um to find this is is not not that easy actually uh (laughs) Choose people in your that you want in your life who are who are real and giving you something back. So it's it works both ways, obviously. But I think time's so short and our lives are so short, and you don't want to waste it with the wrong people. Mm-hmm. And I've wasted it with a lot of wrong people before. So really, um, yeah, realizing who who's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, does that does that count? I don't yeah, know if that counts. That's two. We have one more. So one more. Your truth or lesson with the world. This is very hard. It's got to be one more. I think something that I struggled with is perfection and realizing that nobody is perfect. Nobody's even close to it. And that chasing it's never going to make you happy because I've been there and I've done that and never did. Mm. Never made me happy. And um, being okay with with good enough is good enough. You know, just trying the best that you can and and being 100% who you are. I think this goes back to my first one though. It sort of ties in. But um, yeah, being authentic and um, and that, yeah, it's not about perfection because that, that doesn't exist and it'll never make you happy anyway. It's boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. I think that can count That's number great. three. I love it. That's really hard. I love you it. You should have told me this earlier. <laughs> I could have sat there and come up with a great response. It's all about being spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I say I like spontaneous. You said don't try to be perfect. If you would have known before, exactly. then it would have been too perfect. So it's a perfect and it's yeah. imperfection, right? Yeah. Imperfectly perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to acknowledge you for a moment, Emily, for... All that you've been through. It sounds like you've been through a lot. You've overcome a lot that people weren't even aware of. And it sounds like about a decade of darkness, maybe even longer. And for you to discover at your own worth and really fall in love with yourself, which I think is really important for all of us to do, to be able to do that first is a huge thing. And then to be able to share that with the world and inspire so many millions of people that you do. I want to acknowledge you for all that you're doing to stay committed to yourself and then to share that with the world. It's it's making an impact. So I appreciate you. you. Yeah. Um, Before I ask the final question, I want to know where can we connect with you? Uh, What's the main everywhere? (laughs) Come to Australia. You've got, you've got a number of programs on how to optimize your fitness, nutrition and workouts and things like that. Um, That's all at your website, correct? Yeah. So it's emilysky.com. Make sure you don't forget the E. It's Emily Sky with an E at the end. Dot com. And then there's Facebook. If you just search Emily Sky on there, it'll come up. And Emily Sky Fit on Instagram. Snapchat's the same. And Twitter is Miss Emily Sky. But if I get married, that's going to have to change. Oh. When I get married. (laughs) This is Emily (laughs) Sky. Um, What's the thing you're most excited about right now? Having a baby. Okay. Awesome. Most excited, yeah. That I've pe- never been more excited in my that, life. That people can support you with in your online stuff or what's, you know, are you mostly on Instagram now or Facebook? Where should they go? The main place. I think Instagram's a little bit more personal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on there a lot more and I do talk to everyone on there. 
So I respond, people comment and I respond. But I think what's been really cool about this new journey I'm on having a baby is I'm sort of used to being the person that maybe people come to and I sort of give out information or um, I'm motivation, inspiration, Mm -hmm. whatever it is people come to me for. But now a lot of people are giving back and I'm learning from them about having a baby, which is really cool. And I think they, people like to feel like they're um, offering value or they're, they're needed or wanted. And it's a really cool way for them to give back, give to yeah. me, and and then I appreciate that. So it's like mm-hmm. it really is a community, and really like a family. And I wish I could meet everyone. Yeah, give everyone a hug. Do another world tour in a few years, <laughs> yeah. and you can have everyone come meet you. Yeah. Um. Very cool. Well, I'm excited. I really appreciate the time you came here, and I know this is going to add a lot of value to people. Uh, Thanks we have, for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, the final question is: What's your definition of greatness? Yeah. Definition of greatness is being 100% yourself and working out what it is that you enjoy in life, what, what is your, what's your creative, what gets you out of bed every day, what makes, gives you that, the passion for life and how can you make that a part of your, what you do every day. So whether it's mm-hmm. your career, your job, how can you make it a part of that? And then to me, what's very important is obviously reaching people and, and somehow helping them helping them in some way that's I think if I'm able to do that and sort of give give to them in some way or give back then that's that's my definition definition of greatness so it's when everything's aligned my goals and and what I want out of it and if I am I doing things the right way am I helping people as well it's not just about me and for my own benefit it's it's not enough I, yeah. I need to be doing something more to help yeah. people so yeah, I think that's my definition. Awesome. Emily, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having Appreciate me. It. Appreciate it. Come to Australia, you can get in my suitcase. I will. <laughs> <laughs>